Hi, and welcome to Professor Pincushion. My name is Tova. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about bias tape. Bias tape can be purchased pre-made or you can make your own. It's mainly used to finish raw edges of your garments like necklines, armholes, or hems, or can be used on the edges of craft projects like pot holders or blankets. We're gonna go over a few of the different types and how to use them. Let's go ahead and get started. Bias tape, also known as bias binding, is a narrow strip of woven fabric that's cut on the bias, which is a 45 degree angle on the fabric. Now because it's cut this way, it does have a slight stretch to it, which makes it ideal for going around curved edges as well as straight edges. The three types I'm going to go over are single folded bias tape, double folded bias tape, and then satin blanket binding. Now this isn't technically a bias tape only because it doesn't have that stretch, but you get it in the same section at the fabric store, so I'll also be going over this one. Single folded bias tape can come in half inch or one inch. The side that we're looking at right now where you can see the folded sections and the raw edge, this is considered the wrong side and this would be considered the right side. So I may use this narrow half inch for finishing armholes and necklines and maybe use the wider one for doing my hems. To attach single folded bias tape, you must first decide which side of your garment you want the bias tape to be. Do you want to show it or do you want to hide it? Because it's only going to appear on one side, either the right side of the garment or the wrong side of the garment. So if I want to hide it, I'm going to look at the right side of my fabric and I pin the right side of my bias tape to the right side of my fabric. If I want to have the bias tape as a cool contrasting, so maybe when it's finished, it's going to look like this on the edge on the outside, I'm going to flip over my fabric, look at the wrong side. I'm still putting the right side of the bias tape, but now I'm doing it to the wrong side of my fabric. You'll notice with the single folded bias tape, each side of the bias tape is folded going towards the center of the bias tape on the wrong side. To start, I'm gonna take one of this folded side and I'm going to lightly press it open. You'll notice that we have this crease from where it was folded. You can use your iron to press this to keep it open, but you don't wanna lose this crease. So you wanna use a very low temperature because that's gonna come in handy later. So once I have it open, I'm going to start pinning it, matching the raw edge of the bias tape with the raw edge of my fabric. Usually when I start, if this is my first one and I don't want to see the raw edge here, you can just fold this over like a quarter inch or a half inch, and then I'm going to just start pinning this whole edge here. Stitch using a regular length straight stitch right into that crease there, and don't forget to back stitch, and you're going to do that for the full length of wherever you put the single folded bias tape. Refold your bias tape right on that crease and you're gonna take all the bias tape and you're gonna bring it over, fold it over to the opposite side. So because I stitched it to the right side, I'm gonna bring it all over to the wrong side. So if I'm looking at the right side, you're not gonna be able to see it. If this was the opposite, if I stitched this to the wrong side because I wanna have that cool contrast, then I would fold it and bring it all over to the right side. So whichever way you do it, you're just going to fold it over. If you want to press it, you can, but you should pin it into place. Stitch right along the bottom of your bias tape, and I would use a matching thread color, just so if it's not perfectly straight, it's not going to be as noticeable. But I'll do a contrasting one so you can see what the finished outcome looks like. This is what it looks like on the right side when I'm finished. You see the stitching from where I stitched down the bottom of the bias tape. If I was to flip this over to my wrong side, you can see the bias tape there. So it's not showing on the right side and it's just a neat professional way to finish those edges. If I were to take the single folded bias tape and fold it in half, you would get something similar to the double folded bias tape. So double folded bias tape comes in the quarter inch and then you can get the extra wide double folded bias tape and this is half inch. When you use double folded bias tape, you're gonna see the bias tape on both sides of the project, which is why it's common to use this for something like pot holders. 
When your double folded bias tape is folded up like this, you should notice that one side is slightly shorter than the other side. So looking at this example, my top fold is slightly shorter than the part that's underneath, which is slightly peeking out. This, the shorter side, is the side that goes to the right side of your project. So for example, if this is a pot holder I'm making, just an example, I'm gonna lay this on top of the right side so I have the shorter side up, and then I'm going to unfold the shorter side. And just like we did at the single fold, you can lightly press this. So I'm folding it, since it's double folded, I'm unfolding it twice. So first, and then the second fold. And I'm going to, again, match up the raw edge here of the unfolded bias tape with the raw edge of my project. And again, you can just fold this slightly if you wanna have more of a folded end instead of a raw edge. So then I would go ahead and pin this. If I'm using bias tape all the way around a project, so I'm starting here, going all the way around and then ending at the same point, I just overlap the bias tape. So I'm overlapping about a half inch and you don't have to fold it, you can just lay it flat and just pin it into place. And the same concept would apply for the single fold as well. Stitch in the top crease only using a regular straight stitch. Refold your bias tape. So it's basically wrapping around this raw edge of your fabric or project. So you can see it on the right side and you can see it on the wrong side. Now this part, because it's a slightly longer, it should cover up your stitches from when you first attached your bias tape. So then I would pin this into place and I'm going to stitch right along that edge of the bias tape, catching the bias tape on the other side. So it's doing a nice top stitch on the right side of the project and on the back side of the project, it's holding the bias tape into place. Let's talk about corners. So I'm approaching a corner right now. I'm going to make note of what my seam allowance is currently. Let's say it's a quarter of an inch. From the end of where my fabric is or my project, I'm going to measure up that same distance, so a quarter inch, and I'm going to stick a pin there just to remind me. So I'm just sewing in my crease up into that point. And once I get there, about right there, I'm going to put my needle down, lift my foot. I'm going to rotate my fabric. So you can see my corner right there. So I'm sewing diagonally to that corner. So then once I get it to where I need it to be, I'm gonna go ahead, put my foot down, so right to that corner and right off. And then you can go ahead and take your fabric out of your machine so we can move on to the next part. Here's that same area. So now I wanna go in the opposite direction and I want it to be a nice mitered corner. So you can see I grab it with one hand and I just kind of push it up and then I rotate it so it kind of folds in on itself. So I go up, rotate it, and you'll end up with a folded crease that lines up with this raw edge here. And now I can continue going in this next direction. And you're gonna start sewing from the edge of the fabric here, and again, going in the crease. So you're gonna repeat this for each corner that you have. Now if I was to pull out this bias tape, you can see I end up with a crease and it gives me a nice corner here, but what to do on the other side, so the wrong side of my project, all I do is I just fold my bias tape as normal, just like I was showing you before. So I just take care of one side at a time. So you can see this side is nice and smooth and I can just bring out this corner here. Now, once I've done one side, I can do the other side, but I'm just gonna put my finger right here so when I fold this, I also end up with a crease. So you end up with a nice corner on this side and a nice corner on this side. Here's what it looks like all stitched into place. So this would be technically the right side of my project. You can see my corner here. And then we have the other side as well. You just wanna make sure that when you're stitching, you're actually catching the bias tape on the other side because we don't want that to be loose. Lastly, we have blanket binding. Like its name suggests, it's used to finish blankets like fleece blankets. And really what it looks like is just really wide ribbon that's been folded in half. So that's it, it's just folded one time. 
one side, the outside should be satiny, that's the right side, and this is the wrong side. Just like regular ribbon, it does tend to fray, so if you want to use some fabric sealing on the end, you can use that, and that should cut down on the fraying. To use blanket binding, all you do is open it up, you take the edge of your blanket or fabric, you put the edge right up to that crease, and then you fold it over. So all you're doing is just slipping it on the outside, and because this is kind of satiny and I don't want my pins to kind of scratch it up or make holes, I'm actually going to use these little binding clips just to kind of hold them into place. When I want to turn a corner, this part's a little tricky. I'm going to take my binding here, and you can open it up too. And you're just going to take it and you're going to rotate it so you're going in the next direction. Don't worry about the corner right now. Just get your fabric at least started over here because that'll help. And I'm just going to put a little clip there to hold it. All right, so we have this corner is just kind of sticking up. I'm going to take this, I'm going to pinch it. And if I was to pinch it and lay it down, you'll notice I don't have a miter quarter. I want it to be like this. So that means I'm just going to take this portion and I'm going to fold it under even more. So I just keep rolling it and folding it until you have a nice crease. Now that one looks pretty good because you want it to meet right here. If I do it too much, you're going to end up with something like this. So if it looks like this, it just means you need to bring it out a little bit more. So I just unroll it a little bit and then I check it. So that looks good. So you need to do this on both sides. So I'm just going to put a clip here just to hold it. And then I can go ahead and do the same thing over on this on the back side as well. It's the same method. And once you have them both, you can go ahead and put a clip here just to hold everything. To finish off, so we're pretending that I'm making a blanket. Obviously it's not since it's kind of on the small side. But let's say I went around here and now I'm coming back and I need to know how do I finish this? Obviously you want them to overlap. But what I like to do is here's the end of my binding. So it went all the way around and we're just gonna pretend this is attached to the end. I'm going to take this corner, bring it to the center crease, take this corner, bring it to the center crease, just like you're doing a paper airplane here. And then I'm going to fold it in half on the crease so you end up with it diagonal like this. You want it to make sure that you fully overlap your previous binding here so we don't have any breaks. And then you just slip it on like this. So it doesn't look so obvious. It's a nice diagonal crease right here. So I can go ahead and put a clip and just make sure that it's matching on the back side as well. If I was just to do a straight edge and overlap it like this, which you could do, it just doesn't look as nice. Typically you're stitching on the binding using a zigzag stitch. You probably want a little bit larger zigzag stitch, so maybe do a longer stitch length. So mine's usually a 2.5 and I'm doing about a 3, a 3.2. And I'm just kind of going back and forth. I'm not staying completely on the binding. I'm getting a little bit of the fabric and a little bit of the binding. The main point is you really want to make sure that you're catching that binding on the other side as well. Here's an example of some finished binding on my blanket. Now any place where I have a corner or I have an overlap like right here, I like to do a zigzag stitch going right across it. You need to make sure that you catch it on the other side as well. We hope you found this demonstration helpful for the next time you're trying to decide what type of binding to use for your projects. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.